Hello. Today we're going to be talking about pie. Not the heavenly dessert your grandma makes that pairs well with ice cream, but the pie of a mathematical nature. To start, pie in both cases are intrinsically linked to circles. Pi is the ratio of a circle's diameter to its circumference. As you learn in school, pi can be used to determine the circumference and the area of a circle or the volume and the surface area of a sphere. Pi does have many more major uses in the realms of deep science and statistics, however, I'll leave those explanations to the people who get paid to do this. Another important thing to know about pi is that it is a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, which means, as far as we know, it goes on forever and it doesn't repeat. This fact has spawned the Pi Day tradition of trying to remember and recite ever-increasing denominations of Pi. Because of Pi's prevailing importance, many would think that memorizing vast extents of it is a useful skill for architects, engineers, and scientists. And for the average man, one might consider it a feat of mental acuity that requires great skill and training. As someone who memorized a hundred places for a free pizza, allow me to dispel that theory. Point 1. Given Pi's overwhelming usefulness, most people rarely need to know past 3.1415. This can be explained by accuracy and orders of magnitude. For our example, we'll use the metric system because its base 10 setup makes it easier to follow. Let's say a city hires a civil engineer to make a highway that circles the city to cut down on the traffic in city. In fact, Indianapolis, Indiana, and U.S. Interstate 465 is an excellent representation of this, even if it is a bit blocky. If you take a quick measurement across the diameter of the highway, you'll get around 26 kilometers. Using 3.141 for pi, you get a circumference of 8.666 kilometers, or 81,666 meters, which is an acceptable level of accuracy for planning a highway. But if you use 3.1415.9265, it gives you a level of accuracy down to a tenth of a millimeter, which is a bit overkill for this. This works because, in the metric system, an order of magnitude is one step on a base 10 logarithmic scale. So, every digit added onto the end of pi makes the measurement 10 times more precise. To put things in perspective, there are six orders of magnitude between millimeters and kilometers. And there are only around 23 orders of magnitude between the Large Hadron Collider at 27 kilometers and the subatomic particles it studies. If you want to get extreme, in order to measure the circumference of the observable universe, which contains everything that can be observed from Earth, to an accuracy of the Planck length, which in theory is the shortest possible length, it only requires around 62 orders of magnitude. Although arguably, since there is no unified field theory, most things can be measured to their greatest necessary extent of accuracy with half that amount. It is worth noting that further extensive pi may be necessary for statistical and algorithmic calculations, however, they're not necessary for most practical applications, and just because the math is called calculus doesn't mean you have to do it without a calculator. Now let's move on to point two. Memorizing 100 or even a thousand digits of pi isn't as hard as it would appear, and it's not a good show of skill, comparatively speaking. To demonstrate this, we'll look at music. When memorizing pi, you have 100 positions to memorize that can be in one of 10 possible states. Now let's look at the song Blueberry Fago. The first page contains 17 measures in 4-4 four, four time, and an abundance of 16th notes. That means there are around 272 positions, and each position can be in one of 11 states, which makes it almost three times harder to memorize than 100 digits of pi. And then we have more popular marching band songs memorized by high schools everywhere, like the Final Countdown, which contains 53 measures with a decent amount of 16th notes and 10 possible states 
That makes this song about eight times harder to learn. For the final nail in the coffin to this theory, the average song contains well over 100 words from the over 25,000 most commonly used words in the English language, which means learning your favorite song is over 2,500 times harder than memorizing 100 digits of pi. All of my sources are in the description below, and thanks for watching.